Welcome to the Council of Better Business Bureau's podcast, Better Business, Better Series, where we will explore top of mind topics with business and industry leaders to understand the leading trends and innovations that continue to push the envelope in today's marketplace. By the year 2020, we are on track to have an estimated 200 billion connected devices. This is no longer about your laptop or your phone. It's your house alarm, your car, your refrigerator, even baby monitors. As Dan Caprio with the Providence Group points out, the phenomenal growth of the Internet of Things, or IoT, is already challenging how we think about consumer protection. The Internet of Things is the future of the Internet itself. This is a global uh, phenomenon, and and the, the the opportunities are enormous. But you know, on the on the trust and confidence side, we've got a lot of work to do on uh, on privacy and security. This week is Consumer Protection Week, and here on the Better Business Better Series podcast, we're taking a look at how businesses have to respond to these sweeping changes in the business and digital world. Chris Boyer is Assistant Vice President of Global Public Policy at AT and T. What you're starting to see now is not just the new devices that are coming out on IoT, but you have a lot of devices that are being enabled um, that were not actually built originally with internet connecti- connectivity in mind. They're basically just being added on later on, right? Especially when you're talking about like industrial IoT. So, um, so as we start to see that, that's creating new points of compromise, and we have new systems out there that folks weren't, you know, they weren't considering cybersecurity as they as they went through and they and they did this. So now you have to go back and look at, you know, is it appropriate to connect all these different devices? to the internet and then when you do what is how does the security layer on top of that you, you want to encourage them to develop the devices right but but at the same token there's got to be some measure of security so how do you drive that out to those to those parties and you know there's things that can be done we can, you know I think part of what Michael's done and others you try to raise education and awareness and tell people they need to be thinking about these issues when they build the devices and hopefully they'll get the message and they'll put them in um, you know they'll, they'll do the quote unquote you know security and privacy by design and those types of things but um, but I think to your point um, you know in the long run there are going to be folks out there that just don't get the message or they don't think about those issues and there's going to have to be some ability to come back and correct that. So um, I think that's the biggest challenge is on the device side in particular because there's just going to be so many devices and it's hard to control. That's the key for device makers. Growth and innovation needs to happen and no one wants to discourage that. But in addition to developing devices that help us navigate our world, security and privacy have to be top of mind. Dan Caprio again. We've got a huge, I mean a steep, steep learning curve um you know with with the devices that you saw at at ces um if you walked into a booth and said hey i'd like to you know talk about data minimization or or what you're doing in terms of uh your data practices or or security you know you get a you'd get a blank stare so we've really got to attack i mean attacks the wrong word the the real challenge is is in that sector is all those all those new devices. I mean, we want to harness innovation, but we we've, we've really got a huge education uh, opportunity um, because you know it, I mean maybe this is naive, but you know five years from now it would be re- I mean some measure of success would be to go go to CES and have all of those applications. You know, beginning to differentiate themselves on 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 privacy and security, but we are a long, long way uh, from that point. I mean, there are companies that 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 have you know that are, I mean, some of the hardware companies, the software companies that have been thinking about the Internet of Things for a very long time and have been um, you know doing privacy and security by design, if you will, uh, at the architectural level, and you're starting to see some of that some of that that fruit. But I worry about um, apps and things that that, that are, are, are new and it's novel and people are connecting um, to the Internet or the Internet of Things and just, I mean, and creating an, a vast uh, expanse, uh, a vast uh, attack surface. Attack surface. If you work in the world of IoT, that's a phrase that comes up a lot. It sounds like what it is. Officially, it's the total sum of the vulnerabilities in a given computing device or network that are accessible to a hacker. Shane McGee is Chief Privacy Officer at FireEye and a self-described technologist or geek. One day I looked at my at my router logs for my for my house. You know, everybody has a router and it shows your network address table and the NAT table shows you every device that's connected to your network over the last, in my case, it was 48 hours. And one day I looked at that, and it was uh, 150 devices. Right. 
So it's, uh, and that's the day that it really hit me that the Internet of Things is really here. We're already living it. And I started looking down, and I was, I looked at it, and it made this big uh, impression on me because I was terrified at first. I'm like, oh no, who is, you know, people are, did I leave a, a, a wireless uh, access point open? Are people connecting to it? And I went through, and it took me about an hour, but I checked every single line item, and I knew exactly who it was. And 90% of them were my devices. And some of them were the dog walker had come in and connected five devices. And, you know, other people had come to the to the home and it just it it adds up so quickly because everybody's carrying all these devices with them. Shane echoes the idea that device makers are on the hook for protecting consumers. The big problem that we identified was this security gap, this gap between the rate at which we're innovating, which is fantastic. Love it. Um, It's it's adding value to all of us. But then the rate that we're we're actually increasing security is less than that. Um, people are focused on the, the revenue from the products, on, so very, very passionate about getting these products out that do these wonderful things and not focused enough on security. So look at it, a graph, you've got two lines, and that security gap, I call it, keeps getting bigger and bigger. The, the Internet of Things exacerbates that even more because you have the number of devices and the innovation skyrockets even further, it goes up even faster. And security, even with PCs and all of that, you know, people take security relatively seriously. They, you know, we need to think about security in the development process. But, you know, security by design isn't quite there yet. Mm-hmm. Um, it needs to be. But with the Internet of Things, the, the people that are innovating, coming up with these ideas, are even less concerned about security because it just doesn't seem that important. Why should I really focus on security on the, you know, what I'm putting in a gate opener, like I said, or a doorbell? What, you know, what... That doesn't really impact people on a daily basis, so we can even focus on it less. So this security gap keeps getting larger and larger, and that's that's on the machine side. So what can consumers who are eager to live a more connected life or run out and buy the coolest new gadget do before they buy? Michael Kaiser is executive director of the National Cyber Security Alliance. I think just researching any device, right, before you buy it, like, find out, has this device already been hacked, right? You know, you can find that out about some of these devices, or have people have had bad experiences with these devices in some way, shape, or form. And the one thing that consumers do have some control over is their router at home, and most routers are sitting there blinking on a shelf and haven't been updated in many <laughs> years and collecting dust. And the router is, as you know, as uh, as as Chris was alluding to, that's kind of the where that's where it all happens, right? It all comes in and out through there. So building, again, layers of security where you can uh, along the path is going to be important. But these are not simple consumer messages. Shane McGee also stresses doing your research before you buy. From a, a, As a consumer, the first thing I look at when I'm looking at these devices is the activity and development, the ongoing development. Look at, I go on the website, I go to their updates section, and I look at the, uh, the, the release list, the release notes, and see how frequently they're revisiting the software, updating not just the features, but fixing secure, potential security vulnerabilities and things like that. You know, until we have some type of, um, of certification body or uh, something that gives us some, a stamp to look at to, to judge security, I think it's going to require that type of research on the consumer side. But that's, that's what I look for. And back on the device maker side, what can they do to make security a priority? These products are not designed for the long run like they used to be, but there has to be some... Um, reasonableness standard in terms of support, in terms of patching security vulnerabilities that they find. I mean, a lot of these manufacturers are putting devices out there and then, yep. you know, hands off. And then even when they find about out about a security uh, vulnerability, they won't patch it. And that, that leaves their customers open to uh, a lot of risk. So uh, there has to, I don't know what the answer is, but there has to be some sort of reasonable support. I think what I would like to see these IoT manufacturers do more is engage the security community. I think uh, crowdsourcing to some extent your security, uh, asking the security community to help you test your product, things like that are other things that I look for. Uh, And I think that that certainly engenders trust on, on my side when I see a vendor doing that. But it, the more you engage, the more you open yourself up to that type of testing, and you know some of it can be uncomfortable. And they find, see, you know, you have got the white hat hackers, but it's better that the white hat hackers are going to 
find a vulnerability and practice responsible disclosure and give it to you and give you a chance to update it, then you sort of close yourself off from that community and wait until the bad guys find it. And then it's going to be a lot more painful for you. One huge area of potential growth for the Internet of Things is in medicine. But as Michael Kaiser points out, privacy and security issues there loom large. The opportunity for IoT and healthcare is you know, probably off the charts. I mean, it's great to have things in your home that will water your plant, but if your doctor can be in touch with your health at any given moment or change the parameters of a device that's supporting you or, you know, all the kinds of things that could happen in healthcare, right? It's phenomenal. But, I mean, this is the most personal information that we have, and the the potential for harm, if it goes doesn't go well, um, is also tremendous. So I think it's an opportunity with you know, where the risk factors actually get uh, are, are on an exponential scale. And it's not just an issue of protecting your medical records. There are more critical systems that could be jeopardized. There's all kinds of things that could happen. I'm not trying to minimize that. But if it's your pacemaker, you know, it's a whole different story. So the need to get it right is really, really substantial in the healthcare sector. Dan Caprio also acknowledges the potential for harm when it comes to connected medical devices and patient security. There's a huge gap um, and, and something we're going to you know, the FDA is facing, there's a huge regulatory challenge because if, you know, HIPAA and what's a HIPAA-covered entity and e-health records and what's, uh, you know, personal health information or electric health information, there's so many things, there's so many devices that sort of fall outside of those um, uh, parameters that it's, it's going to really challenge um, and, and I think, um, you know, something that we we need to pay close attention to because it's it's going to be hard for uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the government or HHS to keep up with, uh, with all this. And, and, and you know, they're, they're very interested in, in all these uh, devices, but there's, a, there's just a, there's a canyon of a gap between, you know, what's, what's, what's happening today and current regulation. In other words, it's just the beginning when it comes to the Internet of Things and privacy and security. Businesses have to be proactive and put these issues first. Consumers have to do their research, and regulations are going to come into play more and more. But if you're like a lot of people, the desire to grab that new device and connect even more is going to drive business. And there's no end in sight when it comes to creating new opportunities for a connected world. Shane McGee. It's not really new devices uh, that the Internet of Things is giving us. It's enriching existing advices, it devices. Uh, I got, in the last panel, I was sitting over there and I got a notification from my gate opener that my gate had opened. Uh, then I got a notification that there was motion on my front porch. And then I got, I don't know, does anybody here have the ring doorbell? It's the uh, it's 199 bucks and you it's a uh, it replaces your doorbell and it tells you when somebody's at your door when you have motion there and then he, when they press the bell it rings your iPhone and you look at it and you can see them and day or night it's got infrared on it it's got everything I mean these are incredible devices I love it as a, as a technologist and uh, I think it's going to continue to add value and really impact people's lives in a positive way to learn more about Consumer Protection Week and how the Better Business Bureau can help your business visit bbb.org. For the Better Business Better series podcast, I'm Will Johnson. You just enjoyed Better Business Better series podcast. Be sure to tune in next month for a brand new episode. To learn more about our other shows, visit betterbusiness.blueberry.com. That's betterbusiness.blubrry.com and subscribe. The thoughts and opinions expressed on this podcast are the views and opinions of the guests, not those of the Better Business Bureau, Council of Better Business Bureaus, or program affiliates. This podcast is for information and educational purposes only and is copyrighted with all rights reserved. This podcast is protected by Blueberry's Terms of Service.